Let's begin the studies of relations and functions. A relation is a rule relating two quantities or two variables, say x and y. You may look at relation, for example, x may be your yourself, your name, a name, of a person, and y could be telephone number. One person may have a few telephone numbers, so in, in, in that case, maybe you, you have a name with a few telephone numbers associated with it. Now, what is a function? A function is a relation with a condition. So what is the condition now? It says that the condition must be for each element in one set, we call it a domain is assigned to exactly one value from another set and the set that assigned value is called the range of the function. So the function in this case has three things. One of the things we know a function has is the rules and then there is a domain, there is also a range. Let's look at an example of a function. This is an example of a function showing you the price of fresh chicken sold in NTUC market. Take for example, chicken number one, the price is $4.62. Chicken number two, the price is $4.97. Chicken number three is $5.05. So this function, the rule is to determine the price of the chicken. And maybe based on the weight, and the set of chicken on the left hand side is called the domain and the price on the other side we collect them is called the range here is an example of a function called the squaring function imagine that you have a domain consists of minus two minus one zero one two three and then the rule of the function is square the number. So in that case, you'll find that minus 2, you square it, we are go to 4 after the square. And you'll find that minus 1, you square it, it goes to 1. And 0, you square it, it goes to 0. 1, you square it, it goes to 1. 2, you square it, it goes to 4. 3 you square equal to 9. So after you have squared them, you you find that for every value in a domain, you assign a value in the range. So this is an example of a function. And you can see that domain is minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and the range is 0, 1, 4, 9. We often use a single letter to denote a function say f or g or h for example so in this case we use letter f let's look at another example which of the following is a function the one on the left you find that minus two goes to one number four minus one goes to assign a value one zero assign a value zero 1 assign a value 1, 2 assign a value 4, 3 assign a value 9. So every value in the domain is assigned to a single value in the range. So we know that this is a function. Now if you look at G, on the other hand, G, 0 is assigned to 0, but 1 is assigned to 1 and also 1 is assigned to 2. So now the you have a value 1 in the domain assigned to two different values 1 and 2 now so this is not a function according to the definition of function when a value x might assign to one value y so now this is not a function so g is not a function Now, as I said earlier, the function consists of domain, range, and the rule. 
what is the rule for this function f now? We notice that this function is actually squaring the number. Minus 2 goes to 4. Minus 1 goes to 1. 0 assigned to 0. 1 assigned to 1. 2 assigned to 4. 3 assigned to 9. So this is actually the squaring function. And the rule is x assigned to x squared. So we can say that f of x is equal to x squared. And this is the rule of the function. And this is the functional notation. We give the name of our function f. So f, I'll send x to x squared. And we write in this way. This is how we tell the rules. So the squaring function of team from the example of team, we sometimes describe them by a formula or an equation. So we can take this as f of x equal to x squared. In this case, we don't need a diagram to show you, say, 1 associated to 1, 0 assigned to 0, 2 assigned to 4, for example. It's not necessary anymore. Let's look at another example of a function with a formula. Say gx equal to x cubed minus 1. So this is the rule of the function. So g will send 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 cubed minus 1, which is minus 0 0.875. g will send minus 1 to minus 1 cubed minus 1, which is minus 2. g will send pi to pi cubed minus 1, which is approximately 30. What happens if I change x to a? Then g will send a to a cubed minus 1 according to the rule. And g will send t square to t square cubed minus 1 according to the rule where gx is x cubed minus 1. So this will become t power 6 minus 1 since 2 times 3 is 6. g of h over 2 will become h over 2 power 3 minus 1 which is h cubed over 8 minus 1. g of x minus a will become change the x to x minus a now. You get x minus a cubed minus 1. Now when you write a function in the equation form, we have say f or sin x to y, or usually we say f of x equal to y. Now the term in the domain is called the independent variable. And the y in the image, we have a name, we usually call it the dependent variable. So y is dependent on x in this case. So if you have a function f of x equal to x squared, sometimes you can write it, write it as y equal to x squared by introducing y. Then x is called the independent variable, y is called the dependent variable. Let's look at more example of function. In particular, I'm going to look at piecewise function. A uh, piecewise function is a function where it has different formula for different values of x. For example, take this function, f of x is equal to 0 for x less than or equal to minus 1, and is equal to square root of for my x squared for x between minus 1 and 1 and is equal to x for x greater than or equal to 1. So if you try to draw the graph, you will find that for x less than or equal to minus 1, the value of y is 0. So this is all 0 here. And then for x between minus 1 and 1, the value of y is square root of 1 minus x squared. This is something like 
you can draw it when x equals zero, y equal to one, x equal to minus one, y is zero, when x equal to one, y equal to zero. And then for and this is a open circle because when x cannot equal to one. Whereas for x equal to one or above x squared than equal to 1, value of fx is x, so you know that when x equal to 1, y equal to 1, when x equal to 2, y equal to 2 now, and you have a straight line. So you have three formula for different places of x, so the first part is for this is y equal to 0, for x less than or equal to minus 1. This is y equal to square root of 1 minus x squared, for x between minus 1 and 1, and this part will be y equal to x for x greater than or equal to 1. Next question is, how about f of x equal absolute for x? Is this a piecewise function? Yes, recall that f of x is absolute value of x. In this case, it is equal to x. If x is greater than or equal to 0 and is equal to minus x if x less than 0. This is what absolute value of x means. Alright, since we know absolute value of x is exactly x if x greater than or equal to 0 and equal to minus x if x less than 0. So, this is a piecewise function because it has different formula for different value of x. And if you look at the graph of absolute value of x, you find that it is equal to x, y equal to x, for x greater than or equal to 0, and it's equal to y equal to minus x, for x less than 0. After we have seen so many type of function, how do you test whether a curve on the xy plane is a function. You can do it by drawing a vertical line and test it. Because for a function, given value of x, you must have assign exactly one value of y. So this is what we call a vertical line test. So I have two curves. The first curve on the left side, now you can draw a vertical line. You find that if I draw this vertical line, you'll find that it intersects the curve at two points. So this is not a function. You can also draw a vertical line. Somewhere here you see that it doesn't intersect the curve at all. So but for a function, no matter how you draw a vertical line, it always cut the curve at one single point like here. The second curve is the graph of a function. So the second curve, you have y equal to fx for some formula and rule. So this is what we call a vertical line test. Every time you draw a vertical line, it cut the curve at one single point, then y equal fx is a function. Okay, so y equal f of x is the graph of a function if and only if no vertical line intersect the curve more than once, so only intersect the curve one time. 